In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of In Full Zoom. I'm Esther Lacanta, joined by my colleague here, Jason Salas, because he's very excited about the topic that we're going to be talking about this week, and that's electric vehicles. And let me introduce our guest. We have Jay Jones, of course, the Executive Vice President of Triple J Enterprises, and James Rosenberg, who is with Blink Charging. And uh, let me start with you, Jay. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, about what you, Triple J has planned for electric vehicle charging. Uh, thanks, Nestor. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for having uh, me here today. Uh, we, you know, electric vehicles on Guam are uh, obviously a very new thing. You don't see them very often uh, out on the roads, uh, but we feel like that is about to change uh, in, a, in a pretty big way here in the, in the coming years. Uh, almost every manufacturer makes some sort of electric vehicle now. Almost every manufacturer has said that at some point in their future, they will pretty much only make electric vehicles. So, so it's happening, it's coming. And so uh, we wanted to be ready. And uh, luckily, uh, you know, the relationship with Blink, uh, you know, uh, appeared. And so, uh, so we're looking forward, uh, you know, to, to getting started with them. We, uh, you know, I mean, James can obviously give you um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, facts that, uh, that, that I don't have in, in the back of my head, but, um, but we're, we have uh, chargers on order. We have our first charger going in uh, here at our, our headquarters office uh, in Upper Tumon. So, uh, so we're excited about it. All right, James, uh, let me ask you, tell us more about these electric vehicle chargers. Okay. Uh, well, uh, again, thanks for, for having us. Um, and, and especially me as first time guest here on, on, the, on the program. So, um, all right, so to say that these are uh, a, a, a massive upgrade and a step forward uh, is an understatement. This is, uh, this is a very cool project we're working on. We are unbelievably excited here at Blink to be working uh, on Guam and, and with Triple J here uh, uh, running point there on the ground in Guam. That's, that's awesome. Um, so these chargers are going to stand out a little bit on Blink. So you can get chargers anywhere from you know, eBay to Amazon and this and that. Um, but where ours kind of stand out is the, the quality of the build. Um, and the actual power that is delivered through them. Um, so where some, you know, you'll hear horror stories that, hey, it took me three days to get a charge uh, off of a 110, 120 outlet. That's not the case with ours. Um, so ours are actually running all the way up to the maximum uh, SAE output, which is a 19.2 kilowatts. Uh, in terms of breakers, think the, the, the breakers in your home there, um, this would be pulling off of a 100 amp breaker. That is a ton of power. Um, so for vehicles uh, like older Nissan Leafs, um, you're going to see charges anywhere from you know, six kilowatts and up. Uh, but for some, some uh, newer vehicles that are coming out, for example, the Ford F-150 Lightning, they will take that full 19.2 kilowatts. Um, and that's, that's the difference between you know, grabbing a cup of coffee and, and getting a, a, a very large amount of charge uh, versus having to look at other means of transportation because your vehicle won't move. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's kind of a big thing. Um, and then with ours, uh, they're all smart networked. Uh, so from the app, uh, you'll be able to see uh, where the charges are located, um, what the availability of them is, because uh, obviously you don't want to go down the street if it's got somebody waiting for it. Um, so we're going to do that uh, here uh, across, across Guam and, and elsewhere uh, with a, a full network. So everyone has a, a complete oversight onto it. Um, and not to mention the icing on the cake here is we all know what gas prices are. And uh, this is going to be a much, much better alternative. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Jason is our tech guru here at KWAM, so I'm sure he's got some questions as well. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, James and Jay, you guys are both speaking my love language now. So, like, you know, unfortunately, this show is only a half hour. We could go, like, you know, for two straight weeks, I'm sure, with, uh, with all the questions. But, but first of all, congratulations on this. A huge moment, not only for both of your companies, but obviously uh, for Guam and ushering in a new generation of of transportation and the way we think about, uh, you know, car ownership and taking care of cars. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, first, Jay, um, kind of interesting uh, that you would be deploying and, you know, partnering with Blink on putting in the infrastructure. Um, some people would say, you know, it, 
um, the traditional model would be that you have the fleet on hand and in inventory and then have the uh, have the infrastructure either at the same time or maybe later. But it seems like you guys are going in the opposite direction, which I think is completely advantageous. And talk about like how you're how you're actually envisioning um, having, you know, that supportive infrastructure of the chargers in place once you start getting, you know, product that you can then sell to consumers. Yeah, well, um, th that is true. We, we're, we're maybe putting the car before, before the horse or maybe we're not. I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. But uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, you got to have the chargers to charge the cars, right? So uh, so I, I think that the, the char putting the charger uh, infrastructure in first makes a lot of sense, you know, because it gives uh, potential buyers some peace of mind that they're never going to be left, you know, you know, beside the road, you know, with the, with the, with the drain battery. So I think it makes a lot of sense to roll the charger infrastructure out uh, in advance of, of, you know, maybe a, a huge adoption of, of electric vehicles. Uh, you know, the, the truth is that we would have more electric vehicles on island right now if there were more electric vehicles available in the market right now. But uh, a lot of people know uh, that, uh, you know, there's a, a huge um, supply issue with uh, computer chips and and uh, other components, other vehicle components. And so uh, electric vehicles, uh, just like uh, just like ICE vehicles or internal combustion vehicles are very hard to, uh, very hard to come by. And uh, we have orders with several of our manufacturers for, for, uh, for EVs, uh, but we're just, to be quite honest, having a hard time getting them built uh, mm -hmm. because of, of the supply uh, constraints. And uh, so I think it makes a lot of sense to have, to have uh, charging network out there or at least have a, a good number of chargers out there so that uh, potential buyers feel. Uh, feel and, in, and interestingly enough, Jay, if I may, because, you know, James mentioned a, a variety of brands, um, even at least one or two that uh, the Triple J does not carry. But do you actually see these chargers as being a potential uh, revenue stream for Triple J and or and or like a value add, uh, you know, for your own customers that can pull in and, you know, because. Yeah, I really think it's both. You know, uh, I think some point down the road, uh, it could be a revenue stream. Uh, but uh, in early days, I think it's it's uh, it's a value add for, for our customers and and peace of mind, like I said, and 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 uh, giving customers uh, some comfort with the idea of, of owning an electric vehicle, um, which for a lot of people, I think for most people, it, it's it's a big step. <laughs> it's a very big step. Uh, it's just completely uh, completely goes against uh, you know their. Uh, you know, history. And so, um, you know, you know, and at Guam, it's not even such a big step, I would say, because, you know, you're never that far from home or, or, you know, I mean, even if you were to run out of charge, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world, you know, people in the States, you know, you're hundred miles from home, you know, it could be an issue, but, uh, so I think EV vehicles make a lot of sense on Guam because of our driving distances, uh, you know, and our, and our cost of, uh, you know, fuel, uh, and, and having that network out there just makes it that much easier. And now, James, if I may, on the technology side, um, you know, because you did mention certain brands, uh, I'm assuming that Blink's um, charging stations, they have the open standard, so you can actually fit a variety of models. And like, it's not proprietary, so you you would have to have one charger per brand. Is that correct? Uh, that's that's correct. So uh, so we're using the the standard uh, uh, J1772 plug here uh, on these, these units that are going in uh, at our first location. Uh, we do also offer uh, DC uh, CCS charging uh, solutions as well. Uh, but as you're uh, re uh, referring to the um, OCCP, um, uh, the or open open protocol essentially. Uh, yes, yeah, we do, we do follow that format as well. Um, and we're actually going to get to the 2.0.1 standard uh, if we really want to go into the weeds on the geek, geeky side there just a little bit. Um, but uh, but you know, I'm sure that there's three people out there I'm like, oh, I like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, we're, we're fully in compliance there. Um, and as, as Blink, as you know, uh, we are we're nationwide, uh, throughout the U S um, we actually have locations on Hawaii as well. And that's why I'm continuing to push this out into the Pacific. Um, we operate a network across Europe and, uh, we are constantly, um, you know, pushing to expand globally, um, South and Central America, Asia, uh, you name it. There's, there's uh, big things to come from, from Blink. Uh, well, Nestor, I'm going to hand it back to you while I clear the drool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. James, uh, in talking to you earlier before we started the show, you mentioned that you're also working with government agencies. I know that the uh, Rapid uh, Transit, Authority, the Regional Transit Authority is uh, has been planning to buy uh, electric uh, buses. Uh, 
tell us a little bit more about that and how that would be integrated into, I guess you have to set up a, a charging station, and I believe it's going to be over in Dededo or something like that. Can you elaborate? Uh, I can. So we actually are, are very, very uh, proud to announce that we've, we've done uh, electric school bus fleets uh, b before, um, and they're uh, they're using the same charging technology that we're actually going to be deploying uh, with Triple J at our first location. Um, so that's that's always kind of fun. So uh, of course, if we can if we can pull that off in the frigid cold of Canada, uh, the the hot tropical Guam, I think, is not going to be much of an issue for us. Um, but yes, uh, uh, talking here uh, for, for Guam on the, the transit side, um, obviously, obviously uh, school buses are big, public transit is big. Uh, we have uh, reached out and, and spoken here uh, with, with um, uh, other entities uh, such as uh, Guam International Airport. Um, and uh, we've actually had uh, a few sit down meetings with the Guam Power Authority, because of course we are trying to keep that grid stable uh, and, and be it Guam or be it Texas, New York, California, uh, it's, it's a struggle and it's putting a lot of stress on, on the grid. So um, trying to find out innovative ways to make that go forward. Um, again, with on the, the R&D side here at Blink, uh, having things like say, uh, you have a school bus or a city bus or a transit uh, vehicle that's not currently in use um, and we need to feed power back into the grid. Um, having these as mobile uh, power battery banks uh, is something that we're actually pushing forward uh, very rapidly on. Um, so that, yeah, you know, a tree goes down and, and takes out the connection. We roll a bus in here, power people back up until we get those repairs made. Uh, this is something that, uh, that Blink is, is ultimately seen as the, uh, the end game. Uh, and, and again, so does Triple J, where they can come in and help uh, supply with the, the vehicles that we need. And, and we're going to make sure that uh, any, anybody, be it a consumer or a uh, public agency, when they're buying something that's that expensive, and let's, let's not joke around, they are expensive. Um, they want to be able to know that, hey, this will get charged, this will be maintained, um, and it's not just a, a single plan. We've got redundant uh, uh, chargers in place as well. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. And, Jay, you mentioned earlier that, um, you know, su the su supply right now of vehicles is an issue because of global conditions. But um, assuming that supply uh, um, is worked out eventually, how do you think uh, Guamanians will uh, take to electric vehicles? Um, you think uh, that'll be, it'll be, a, I guess it will take a while for it to become um, well accepted here? Uh, based on the, on the preliminary interest that we've uh, received uh, and, and questions and, and inquiries, I, I think it's, I think it's gonna happen probably more quickly on Guam than in a lot of places. Um, just because, you know, like I said, uh, our driving habits, uh, I think are rather conducive to, uh, uh, to EVs. You know, we're typically not driving more than maybe 30, 40 miles a day. I think of the average, uh, the average person. So, uh, you know, it would make a lot of sense uh, to have an electric vehicle. So I, I, I really think, you know, it's one of those things where you see someone else, your neighbor gets one. So you start to think, oh, maybe I should look at it, you know? And I think that'll happen pretty rapidly. And, and the vehicles are cool. I mean, if you've never driven an uh, electric vehicle, they're, they're fun to drive. I mean, they got a lot of power. They got a lot of torque. You know, I think people who are worried, you know, they think a golf cart, right? When they think electric vehicle, a lot of times, and that's absolutely not the case. You know, they're, they're fast, they're fun. They're so smooth and quiet. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a dyed in the wool, you know, car guy. And, uh, you know, I like big motors and lots of power. And I, I really like driving EVs. So uh, they're fun. I, have to admit, I'm, I'm some, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit, but, but I do admit they're hard to drive. But, I guess uh, for, so a, for a little bit of context, gentlemen, Governor Leon Guerrero has also gave a very glowing endorsement um, for EV technology in general. And she, and she said, you know, she also recognizes that this is going to be the dominant force of transportation. And uh, right, Nestor, she's also uh, dedicated a substantial amount of funding for the Guam Regional Transit Authority to have their fleet of public transportation run on EVs. Yeah, and I, I think uh, they've got a lot of uh, federal funding as well. So yeah, Definitely um, moving in that direction for sure. And uh, Jay would know because, you know, Triple J, of course, has been in the uh, uh, car sales business for a long time now. So he, he's, I'm sure, got the uh, pulse of the consumer uh, in mind as well. 
Any more questions? Technical questions there, Jace? Well, I, I was actually going to ask Jay just to maybe dovetail off of what he was just saying because, um, you know, Jay, I absolutely agree with you. Like, I can't wait to get, you know, into a EV and pardon the pun, but, you know, as you begin your rollout, you know, of the of these new vehicles, right? Um, of course, range anxiety tends to be something that on a consumer level gives people like, you know, like pause and they're like, I wonder, you know, am I going to die out in the middle of the road? And certainly with James technology, you know, that's going to help that with the network, you know, established and, you know, um, uh, charging stations conveniently located. But uh, what would you say to people who have like a little bit of range anxiety at the moment? And, and they say, you know, I really like my my gas motor and I like the fact that there's gas stations all over the place, but you know, as you begin this deployment, you know, how are you focusing on that? Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I really just go back to the idea of, you know, asking people, you know, how much do you drive a day, you know, keep track, you know, and, and really, really pay attention to how much you're driving on Guam. You know, you're, you're really not putting that many miles on your car a day and you could see the empty coming, <laughs> you know, probably a few days in, a, in advance, you know, before it happens. So, you know, whether you buy, you know, we, we have several of the, uh, the Blink 150 chargers, the, the home chargers uh, on the way. And so whether you put one of those chargers in your house, you know, so that you have enough power to top off or, you know, as hopefully we roll out to banks and shopping centers and grocery stores and so forth, you know, you know that you can top off, you know, pretty much anywhere you go. Uh, I think that range anxiety uh, slowly evaporates for, for most people. Uh, I really do. Sure. It's, it's the neighbor thing, too. You know, once your neighbor says, oh, yeah, it's not a problem, you know, that uh, that goes a long way. There you go. And, and Jay, if I may, um, you know, what what is the time that people are going to have to allot for when, like, say, I bring in a uh, my EV, which is almost uh, completely empty and everything. Um, when I hook up to one of your charging stations, um, how long is it going to take to get my car back to a full charge? And then maybe if you can... Uh, explain like a little bit about the uh, the larger rollout is or the uh, deployment as Jay was just saying like at restaurants you know malls um, grocery stores and whatnot so where people can expect to see more of your uh, blink stations. Is that for James or for Jay? Or, or for James? I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Um, so uh, on the on the chargers on the charger side, uh, of course, every vehicle is going to have uh, different charging times. Um, and there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, factors that are, are figured in here. If, if it's really cold, is it very hot? Uh, is it sitting out in the sun charging? Is it in the shade? Uh, these, these little differences uh, will definitely impact charging time. Um, so the, the big thing to know is, uh, for example, we'll go with the Tesla uh, Model 3 as a, an example. It's the most popular vehicle in the United States right now that's uh, full EV. Um, if you're talking uh, between a 0% state of charge and a 5% state of charge, uh, and you're, you're plugged into the, the fastest supercharger you can get in, in, in their network, um, you're actually adding the equivalency of over a thousand miles of range uh, there um, uh, uh, per minute. But what they don't tell you is that, uh, or, or what they, they don't advertise so much is that that rate will quickly drop off. Um, so where if you get down towards the, uh, the end there, uh, it, it might only be adding a, a couple miles of range per minute. Um, so that's that's a big thing. So, you know, when you come in and you're at a 90 percent state of charge and you're trying to get that last 10 percent, that last 10 percent will get added uh, much, much, much slower than your, your first 10 percent. Um, so the uh, kind of the golden rule of thumb is if you come out at zero percent and you're going to go to uh, what we say is a, a typical full charge is between 70 and 80 percent, because that's kind of the sweet spot for speeds right now with current battery technology in the world. Um, you're looking right around right around two two hours. To three hours, okay, um, and uh, with with something like this, um, and that's where a lot of people are are kind of starting to see where we're putting these into office parks and schools and colleges, um, because they say, hey, you know, I got a four hour class, great. You plug in, you go to class. By the time you get out, that is more than enough time. You are fully charged to hundred percent at this point, mm -hmm. um, and you just go on without your day. So you no longer have to take that. 10 minute drive to the gas station and then you know the, the five minutes to fuel up or 10 minutes to fuel up and another couple minutes to drive back and uh you know it, it's it's just uh one less thing you have to worry about well done and uh, james if i could, could uh, stick with you um you also um handle regionally um and in, in s several asia pacific countries and even europe i think um how is that, that those markets what is the take up of electric vehicles in in those other countries that you service so that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, I, I don't have the source in front of me right now, but it's on my, my LinkedIn profile. I, I always like to throw out this, this data that's out there. 
Um, and it's the adoption rates. And right now, as I recall, about 69% of Americans um, were saying that they are still opting for ICE vehicles, being gasoline and diesel. Um, if you go to a country, say, like South Korea, they were kind of the leaders of the pack. Those numbers are reversed, where we're seeing almost 70% of people want, at the very minimum, uh, to have a, uh, a hybrid vehicle. Um, but a, a vast majority of that sector are, of course, want uh, plug-in hybrid or full electric. Um, so we're seeing anything, you know, like in the Korean market. Uh, now we're seeing uh, 5% of all new construction, or 5% uh, of parking spaces in all new construction uh, must be EV. Uh, and it will be 2% of all existing uh, parking spaces must be EV. Um, those sort of rules are now applying to the US as well. Uh, I believe it was in Boston, if I'm not misquoting. Uh, I think they're now uh, uh, pushing a 10% of all parking needs to be EV ready. Uh, we're starting to see uh, high percentages of that out in Washington state, uh, as well as California, Florida, Texas, these, these EV market uh, leading states. So, so it's, it's moving along, yeah? Uh, at, at, at breakneck speed. Um, our, our biggest issue, just like the car industry, uh, is uh, just getting components, getting chargers, getting them delivered, uh, and you know, getting stuff off of boats. Uh, it's, it's always a fun task. It's never a dull moment in, uh, in the industry right now, I can tell you that. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. But what are the innovations that are in the wings? Um, what is the industry working on? What's the next, uh, next level? Well, of course, the biggest thing is uh, it's kind of twofold. So we're working with the, the, you know, the chemical side, the battery side, where we're seeing newer, faster uh, batteries that are better for the environment, longer lasting, multiple, uh, multiple times uh, more the endurance uh, there where maybe uh, temperatures don't affect it as much. Um, so that's, that's something you're gonna see, you know, nickel-based batteries, uh, the solid state batteries, these are all awesome things. Um, and then, of course, our chargers to go uh, in tandem with that. You know, a, a few years ago, a 100 kilowatt charger was pretty much the, the breakneck pinnacle. Uh, now here at Blink, we've got uh, 300 kilowatt uh, and, and faster uh, charging units uh, that are going in the ground right now. Um, obviously, the, the, the grid has to support that. Um, but another uh, big factor you're going to really see, and I, well, maybe, maybe most people won't see it, um, are the people that are putting ridiculous amounts of miles and they need the rapid recharge. So we're talking um, about uh, like stroll Guam, right? The people are driving around all day and, and, and uh, uh, taxi services, uh, delivery services, uh, the U.S. post office, um, where we are looking at uh, custom solutions for fleets where we can have um, uh, you know, either faster chargers or chargers to support large swaths of vehicles uh, to charge at one time. Um, these are all, all different things that we're, we're trying to focus on because that will also drive the industry forward. Uh, and the more that the fleets and large corporations um, buy up soon on, that will just help lower consumer prices. All right, so I think we got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Jay, you wanna just kind of uh, close this out and give us a final recap of uh, what the plan is uh, for uh, the first, I guess this would be the first ever uh, EV charging unit uh, that to be uh, built in, in Guam. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but but sure, <laughs> we're uh, <laughs> at our at, at our uh, HQ building here uh, in in Upper Tumon, uh, the Ford building in front of Kmart, as, as most people know it. Uh, we uh, we have a I think we'll probably have it uh, installed within the next uh, two weeks. Uh, we got to do some concrete cutting, some trenching. Uh, you know, the 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 wiring is some pretty uh, some pretty hefty gauge wire, so uh, you know we got to pull some wires. Um, and uh, so it's it's going to take a little bit of a uh, little bit of engineering uh, to retrofit, uh, you know, into uh, into the spot we want to put it, which makes it convenient uh, to uh, you know to to most consumers or to most uh, drivers. Uh, it's right there, uh, in, in visible from the mobile station, which is kind of ironic, but uh, it's right right there in the uh, right there in the in the corner. So. Uh, it should uh, it should be a good spot. Uh, custom consumers can see it from uh, from Marine Corps Drive, so uh, it 
it should be uh, it should be a good spot. I think. Hey, real quick, will it be available to to motorists twenty four seven? You know, we haven't figured that out yet. You know, we, we do have uh, you know some lot security issues that we that we have to contend with. Um, sure. And so we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do that yet. Okay. Uh, so I, the short answer is I don't know okay. <laughs> at this point. Yeah, but uh, eventually that is the plan: is to you know is to is to make it. Uh, Accessible. All right. Well done to both of you. All right. Uh, we're excited. Electric vehicles, uh, wave of the future. It's coming. Get ready for it. Thanks for joining Take us, my gentlemen. money, please. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Jones is the executive vice president of Triple J Enterprises, and uh, James Rosenberg is with Blink Charging, talking to us from Florida this morning or today. Uh, I'm Nestor Lacanto. That's Jason Salas. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on In Full Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E.